Hi, this is part four of Oh That Mo, uh, taped from, uh, well, videotaped from a YouTube video that goes by a different name. But since this version may not be as good as the original, I'm going to put a link in the description at the bottom of this video uh, so you can click on it. Or is it on the top? I'm, 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 if, it's, if it's in live, like it's in the top. So anyway, <laughs> you can click on it and see the good original version. That way you can look up the uh, the sayings from the Hadith and the scriptures from the Quran that are presented in this uh, video. Okay. Here is part four, I believe. The revelation he was looking for. I'll go for. back a little bit. It said... Have you not heard of Allah? He was convinced that he had seen a demon, and that's a problem. Another early report says here Muhammad was being strangled so hard he felt like he was going to die. We know from Muslim records that when Go Muhammad began receiving revelations, his... As of events like this, that the Sunni versus Shiite no. split occurred, leading to mutual forcefully impressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. Then he released me and again asked me to read and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear it any more. Then he released me again and asked me to read, but again I replied, I do not know how to read or what shall I read. Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me and then released me and said, read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists has created man from a clot, read, and your Lord is the most generous. Another early report says here Muhammad was being strangled so hard he felt like he was going to die. We know from Muslim records that when Muhammad began receiving revelations, oh, by the way, first forcefully impressed me so hard, forcefully impressed me so hard that I could... By the way, uh, when it says read, uh, uh, it's created man from a clot, you find out in uh, in Sahih, actually, yeah, Sahih Hadith, that means sound, that it really is a blood clot. Muslims try to tell you that it's really a, a, a leech. It means leech now, but back then it always meant clot. Uh, and uh, the reason why it means uh, clot is because in the Sahih Hadith, Muhammad says that embryos go through a 40-day blood clot stage. I kid you not. It, it, it says, and then it becomes, not like it appears, it becomes a clot of blood. So I'll continue here. Bear it anymore. Then he released me and again asked me to read and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear it anymore. Then he released me again and asked me to read, but again I replied, I do not know how to read, or what shall I read? Thereupon he caught me for the third time, and pressed me, and then released me and said, Read in the name of your Lord, who has created all that exists, has created man from a clot, read, and your Lord is the most generous. Another early report says here Muhammad was being strangled so hard he felt like he was going to die. We know from Muslim records that when Muhammad began receiving revelations, his first impression was that he was demon-possessed. We know that after his experience in the cave, he became suicidal, tried to hurl himself off a cliff. We know that it was his wife Khadija and her cousin Wadika who persuaded him that he wasn't possessed, he was a prophet of God. Now, what happened to Muhammad in the cave when the Quran started coming to him? I, I don't know. But I know this, when he ran out of that cave, uh, terrified, depressed, and suicidal, he was convinced that he had seen a demon, and that's a problem. Initially, Muhammad's wife's cousin, Waraka, correctly believed Muhammad was demon-possessed. After Muhammad's wife, Khadija, explained to Waraka what was happening with Muhammad after his first encounter with the being who would come to be seen as Gabriel, Waraka had a very interesting perspective, quote, Wadaka expressed surprise and said Jibreel only came to prophets, the best of creatures, so he wished to meet the prophet. 
He said that sometimes the devil deceives people pretending to be Jibreel, and then he to whom the devil goes turns mad." Unquote. This is correct, as 2 Corinthians 11.14 says, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Muhammad's revelations were clearly demonic possessions. During his alleged revelations, Muhammad would hear ringing in his ears and sweat profusely. He would turn red and breathe heavily. He would be choked. He would move his lips quickly. He would hear voices thinking trees and rocks were speaking to him. He would fall to his knees with trembling shoulders. He would feel dread and terror. He would have a racing heart with swollen veins on his shoulders and neck. He would have a severe fever. This is consistent with demonic possession, and it's inconsistent with what is documented about the experiences of previous prophets who received actual revelations from God. And there are other problems. Think about the satanic verses, the verses that Muhammad delivered to his followers and later claimed were from Satan. Uh, when Muhammad, this is how the story goes, when Muhammad was preaching in Mecca, he, he didn't win very many converts, but he wanted his countrymen to accept Islam and he was hoping to receive a revelation that would help them. And then one day, of course, he got the revelation he was looking for. It said, Have you not heard of Alat and Alusa and Manat, the third, the other? These are the exalted cranes whose intercession is to be hoped for. So there are these three goddesses that are like birds. They're exalted cranes who can carry your prayers to Allah. This was originally part of Surah 53 of the Quran. Uh, Muhammad delivered these verses to his followers. He bowed down in honor of them, and his followers bowed down with him. But a little while later, Muhammad told his followers that these verses, which he had delivered as part of the Quran, weren't really from God, they were from Satan. And he replaced them with the words that we find in the Quran today. So when you read Surah 53, keep in mind the fact that it originally promoted polytheism, and that Muhammad couldn't tell the difference between a revelation from God and a revelation from Satan. It's also interesting to note that at one point... At this moment, our life expectancy is increasing at the rate of five hours every day. This means that soon, we might all be living in an era... Late in life, Muhammad was a victim of a magic spell, according to him, not according to me. Uh, several passages in Bukhari uh, report that someone stole a hairbrush and, from Muhammad and used it to cast a spell on him. Uh, Ibn Asaq tells us that uh, Muhammad was bewitched during this time, and Bukhari adds that the spell made him delusional. So according to Muslim sources, God's greatest prophet was under a spell for, let's say, a year, and that's a problem. In Quran 69, 44-46, Muhammad stated if he fabricated false teachings, i.e. invented revelations not from God, then he would have his aorta cut, it says. And if he had fabricated against us some of the sayings, we would certainly have seized him by the right hand, then we would certainly have cut off his aorta. Well, it just so happens that the Muslim sources tell us Muhammad was poisoned by a Jewish person and then reported that it caused him to feel as if his aorta was being cut, quote, narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died used to say, O oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Kabar, and at this time I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. And so we look at the historical records and we, we find that Muhammad, was origi Muhammad originally thought he was demon-possessed. Um, he became suicidal when he started receiving his revelations. He delivered verses from Satan and people could cast spells on it. And you know, Muslims, a lot of Muslims don't know anything about this, but even if you point it out, uh, they say, ah, it's no big deal. Uh, but I look at it and say, maybe there's something wrong here. According to Islam, the Quran is infallible. That is, it is free from error. Moreover, Islam teaches Muhammad's Sunnah, that is, his sayings and deeds in the Hadith literature, are to be followed by Muslims. This presupposes they are accurate and thus worthy to be followed. For example, Muhammad said, Keep to my sunnah. And there are many references in the Quran ordering Muslims to obey and emulate Muhammad's teaching and example. 
Thus, if there are historical, scientific, logical, and prophetic errors in the Quran and authentic Hadith material, this proves Muhammad was a false prophet and that Islam is false. The Quran is chock full of errors, whether logical or historical, scientific, mathematical. You name the category, the Quran probably has an error that would fit into it. An example of a logical... <clears throat> If you're a Muslim uh, and you think, oh, they're reading into things or, oh, it's taken out of context or it's twisted, uh, put your uh, uh, comment in this video and we'll see if that's true, okay? Uh, find out if uh, it's uh, taken out of context or whatever or uh, twisted or something like that, okay?